it's very much the alchemical process. So you bring in different elements, you add the heat of emotion, and just that by itself creates some kind of transformation. And Jung talked about it in his book, Mysterium Conjunctionis, the mystery of that conjunction. He says, nobody knows how this happens. It is a total mystery, but you bring these opposing forces together and, and hold them in tension, and something marvelous comes out of it. When I do my work, when I'm in my studio, I'm always, I know that there's the possibility that the collective unconscious will want something from me, will choose me to do something. And um, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. And this is where it, 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 this bleeds into my expectations for, for the confluence this year, that the process that we started in Montana uh, is going to extend into exploring what the collective unconscious wants from the group. And that's very exciting to me. Yeah. It's not an art conference, and it's not an art training session. It is people being together who want to be together, who join in with us. Jung was once asked what was the most significant innovation that he had come up with in his lifetime. He's well known for things like extroversion, introversion, and many other things. But he was asked what was the most significant innovation, and he said to recognize the collective unconscious. And of course he describes that in detail in the Red Book, in his famous, effectively, it's a journal of his own experience when he was passing through a transformational time for himself. And he was fortunate that he was already a, a made psychiatrist when he went through this five-year period of visioning. Uh, that some will come into the middle and have things to say, but everybody else is hearing what they have to say. <clears throat> and then stepping back, and somebody else comes in and has something to say. Um, that that kind of openness is what the feminine rising means to me. Yes. Uh, inclusiveness and openness and transparency. Um, but we need the masculine voice to give the nuts and bolts of a sort, to give it a construction. For the masculine and, and feminine to become friends or become fluid, you know, that's that's sure. what the Age of Aquarius is all about, too, yes. the water bearer and, and getting things to um, the confluence, rivers coming together into a bigger stream. Mm -hmm. The actual metaphor of that is wonderful. It's really trying to create a temenos, which is a, a, a sacred space, for something magical to happen. As leaders, what we want to try to do is, is spark creativity with some ideas and some activities, and then kind of back up and let everybody do their process. And hopefully part of the magic of this is going to be something that emerges out of the community where people are so enlivened by the possibilities that they just open up the gates of their own creative unconscious and bang, something marvelous will happen. That's what I'm looking forward to. As we look back historically, and I'm just going to use art history because we're art, we see movements where things were happening in um, a wide variety of people at the same time the unconscious was bringing things up. Yeah that is mirrored maybe in physics and in the sciences and music and yeah. so that's how we know that the unconscious is working and yeah. trying to take us somewhere. It's time for the arts to become a tool, a vehicle for the um, modern human being. Yes, together. using yeah. Yeah, the arts as uh, a vehicle for excavating that. Yeah, yeah. Margaret Mead had said that there's simply no doubt that a small group of people can change the world because it's the only thing that ever has. And we need them. We desperately need 
the change, but it's not a change that I can give you a definition of. There's no definition. You have to come and be there and see and, and experience it for yourself and then take it back to your own community. You know, I get excited when I think about seeing what is the unconscious of the group, you know, because the collage shows what, what my unconscious is wanting me to see now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I might do that in a small group with another person. Even that I haven't done. You know, what if you and I made a collage together? Oh. You know, we probably have some issues about what gets to be in the middle. And, <laughs> you know, is this okay? Is this? But um, what would become of that if we bring our two unconscious together? And then I know what we're going to do is the whole uh, group uh, collage on Sunday. At, at the end of it, we'll see... What is the unconscious of this group telling us? It is prophetic. We know that the unconscious knows what's coming down. We just don't give it our time and attention. I really love the way in which the confluence is, it's a, in the beginning, it's a kind of leveling process that some people who consider themselves artists don't have an advantage. It, it's all, we are all, we all have the right to do art, artwork. We all have the right to do self-exploration. And when we do it together, the, the gain and the benefit is so much greater because we're, we're resonating with one another. I think there are groups like this all over the world that are doing exactly what we're doing. People coming together saying, how can we respond in a new way? And so I... I'm just full of hope that there's something that will uh, that will grow out of these ashes of of what seems like a spiraling uh, civilization. Now, our community now in the United States is so divided. Yeah, I'm really ready for a community where people try to listen and to each other, understand each other. Mm -hmm. Think of each other as people with depth. Yeah. Yeah. And fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Maybe in 50 or 100 years, there will be something that comes out of it, partly because of the nourishment we've been putting into the roots of, of the psyche. <laughs>